guys, today we're here to chat about my favorite powders for mattifying, for oily skin. I have eight powders in total, four high-end, four drugstore, didn't do it on purpose. These are just my favorite powders to use. I will link below to some videos about my favorite primers for oily skin, favorite full coverage foundations for oily skin, favorite light coverage foundations, favorite drugstore foundations, lots of great oily skin content linked down in the description box. And keep in mind when I'm mentioning these products, I'm gonna give you all the information, the price, the shade range, the avail availability, all that good stuff. So use that to figure out what powder you like the most. Because a lot of the time when I do these roundups, people are like, well, what's your favorite? And these are all my favorites, that's why I'm mentioning them. And I like to use them for different reasons. So if I'm like, you have to buy the Dior loose powder and you're like, I don't wanna spend $66, then I've got tons of great options for you. So let's go ahead and get started. That being said, let's kick it off with the powder that I recommend to just about anybody when they're looking for a mattifying powder. It's accessible, it's easy, it's affordable in my opinion, and it is the CoverGirl Outlast All Day Matte Setting Powder. This is available just about anywhere at any drugstore, will retail anywhere in between probably like eight to $12, depending on where you live in the world. It comes in three different shades, and when you look at it, the shades look very, very fair, but I will say I've worn this shade here, light to medium and I've also worn medium to dark so there's really not much coverage in there there's not really like you're not really building up anything on your skin I really love this for both setting my liquid foundation and then I also had to go grab this out of my purse I had to go grab I think three or four of these out of purses so when it enters a purse that's when you know it's great and I've mentioned this before when talking about the powder but I was at the launch for this uh, particular powder and I don't know that it necessarily truly indicates if it's a really good mattifying powder, but they took this versus a competitor, it was L'Oreal, and they put water droplets on each of them, and the water droplets sat on top of this and sunk into the other powder. So again, I'm no scientist, but what I can tell you <laughs> is this, it definitely helps keep me matte. A lot of these powders I have also repurchased, so I've repurchased the CoverGirl powder because I dropped and broke it and had to buy it again, a powder that I have bought time and time again that is great as a foundation and to set your face is the MAC Studio fix powder. This retails for $35 Canadian, a little bit less American. You're getting 15 grams of product in here and it comes in a ton of shades and it's incredibly versatile. When I first bought this, I only used it to set my face. Then for about a year and a half, I would say, pretty much every time I use foundation, I use this. I have repurchased this four or five times and it's so beautiful. You can get great coverage out of it using it just as a powder. I don't find it looks cakey or dry. I feel like it has good lasting power. Or with a fluffier brush, you can use it to set your face, add a little bit more coverage to your face and you're also adding that mattifying factor. So this is just such a staple. I feel like so many people have talked about it, but I continue to purchase it no matter how much makeup I have and no matter how many things I try, this is just one of those absolute staples for me. Moving back to the drugstore, but another powder Powder that I have repurchased several times. Again, I broke this one and repurchased it. Only problem with this one is for my Canadian friends that I don't believe it's available in store in Canada. From what I can tell, Neutrogena does not sell their makeup here in Canada, which is a bummer. You may be able to get it online somewhere. I saw it on Amazon Canada, but it was like $25. But it is the Neutrogena Shine Control Powder. This has rice powder in there, and you'll see a lot of rice powder in mattifying products. And this was, I think, the first mattifying powder I ever bought because I watch a lot of YouTube and I didn't watch any Canadian YouTubers, I don't think I did anyways, watching a lot of British and American when I first started watching YouTube in about 2009, 2010, and somebody had said that they liked this and I loved it. I also bought the Neutrogena Healthy Skin, which I was like, why is this falling off of my face? At the time I didn't realize I had oily skin. <laughs> I know better now, but I think this is a really beautiful powder. Uh, this for me is kind of a purse powder, if that makes sense. I don't do a lot of setting my face with this, not on purpose, but it's just kind of something that I always keep in my bag. That being said, I have broken it before. It is slightly fragile. It's not super fragile, but just, I mean, it's, it's I feel like I've had better luck with the CoverGirl in my purse than this one, but it is really, really beautiful. It is a white powder that's translucent, but I wouldn't say it's completely translucent. If you have a deeper skin, I would be careful with it, but it is beautiful for touch up. Really, really great. Doesn't look heavy or cakey on the skin. I wouldn't say it's like the most finely milled powder, but at the same time, it's not gritty or cakey, but it is a really, really great option from the drugstore. Oh, and I didn't mention the price. I think it is gonna, again, retail anywhere between 10 to $15, and you're getting 
four grams of product in here. Let's move very, very, very far away from the drugstore into the land of luxury and Dior. This is the Dior Skin Forever and Ever Control Extreme Perfection and Matte Finish Invisible Loose Powder. This guy retails for $66 Canadian. You're getting eight grams of product in here, but this is one of the smoothest, silkiest, finely milled powders. It is gorgeous. What I love this for primarily is setting my primer underneath my foundation, and I find when I do that, I get incredible wear on my makeup. There's, um, I've been meaning to kind of chat a bit, like more about that in videos is setting your primer. It's not something I do every day, but I also don't feel like every loose powder does a good job of that, and that is mostly what I reach for this for. I've also ca carried this in my bag for touch-ups, and I have used it to set my face as well. So I think it's a gorgeous powder. It's translucent, only comes in one shade, but I haven't had any issues with it looking super cakey on the skin or leaving any whiteness. So it does, it's like, translucent but it's not completely white if that makes sense it has a little bit of a hue to it which makes it a little bit more forgiving and I think it's just an incredibly smooth powder I love all the drugstore ones I'm mentioning I love this one today so that's why I'm giving you options but if you do have the extra money to spend or if you were curious about if it actually worked I think it's gorgeous let's bring it back to the drugstore something I have hit pan on which is always so exciting it's the Maybelline fit me matte and poreless powder and the matte and poreless foundation I think the liquid gets so much glow I don't hear as many people talking about this, but this is great because it comes in a ton of different shades. Maybelline has done an incredible job continually expanding the shade range of Fit Me, which I think is amazing, especially for the drugstore. Everybody deserves to walk into a drugstore and find their shades. So I really, really appreciate that they continue to expand their range. I wear the shade 330 in this. I've also worn, uh, I think, 315. This has 8.5 grams of product in here, and again, will retail for about $8 to $12. Maybelline I find is a little bit cheaper than most brands at the drugstore but it really depends where you pick it up and I really like this I haven't used this as a powder foundation but it does add a little bit of coverage it has color and if you're looking to add a little bit of something to your skin to just slightly bump up your foundation this is a great option and I love this to set my face I haven't really dabbled much with it to uh, kind of blot my face or throw it in my purse or anything like that but I love this for setting my makeup I use this in combination with another powder that I'm about to show you in the majority of my oily skin diaries reviews to kind of keep things normalized and it's a great powder up next I want to mention this powder from Inglot and I've talked about before setting my face and going in with a powder. So I have all kinds of different methods <laughs> of keeping my face matte and that's something I really like to do and I've done it with the Dior powder as well. It has to be a very silky, silky, smooth, finely milled powder. After I've powdered my skin and set it, sometimes setting it with a setting spray can make it look really greasy all over again. So sometimes I'll go back in my T-zone and powder again and I really love this Inglot powder for that. Or setting my face or touching up, super versatile. It's the mattifying loose powder and it comes in a couple different shades I have the shade 33 so it's like a translucent ish so this one is kind of a beige I think there's a yellow maybe a more kind of like traditional white translucent this retails for I believe $30 Canadian what I just noticed is how little product there is in here there's 2.5 grams which is very very little in comparison to say the Mac which has 15 the Dior had 8 so yeah, that's not much product. You really only need a little bit of it, but that's something to keep in mind. They do have one for $45 that has 16 grams of product, which would be on par with the MAC. So let me, actually, let me double check the price on this. Okay, so this actually retails for $24 Canadian. So definitely when you're kind of considering the price versus grams of product in here, it is definitely a pricey option. I encourage you to check the actual grams of products. I see a lot of people saying, this looks so small, there's barely anything in it. But until you actually look at the amount, packaging can be so incredible deceiving sometimes things that look really small are actually big and big are actually small that's a whole other story but I will say I truly do love this powder I think it's a great powder it really helps keep me matte I love that it is translucent but you can get it in a few different shades so that you can better match your skin and I really do feel like it helps with mattifying it's super smooth really really finely milled onto a powder that has an absolute ton of product in it this one is the newest to my collection and how much does this retail for i'm sorry i didn't memorize all this information it's 40 dollars. you're getting 35 grams of product in this bad boy 35 grams three times the size of the mac powder uh, 16 times the size i think of the inglot powder i don't know 
Math is not my thing. It's the Too Faced Peach Perfect Mattifying Loose set Setting Powder infused with peach and sweet fig cream. This is the newest powder to my collection, but I did want to mention it because I have been so impressed with it. I know I've said like finely milled and smooth a thousand times, <laughs> but this is another very, very finely milled and smooth powder. Take a drink. I find this so finely milled to the point where I inhale it almost every time I use it, and I feel like I saw a lot of people when the peach videos were coming out doing the same, and it wasn't just dramatics, people. It really gets up in there, but beautifully smooth powder it has a little bit of a hint of color to it uh, If you do have really deep skin just keep in mind I'm not totally sure how that would work for you, but I have no issues I love it for setting my face. I love it for touch-ups and I like it under my eyes as well uh, I don't love all of these powders for under my eyes I try not to go too mattifying under the eyes, but there's something very very smoothing about this powder This was actually my second runner-up in my most recent like if I lost all my makeup, what 10 products would I buy? I was really, really debating this. I ended up going with the MAC powder because I figured it could act as a powder foundation, but this is a beautiful product. And although it is a higher end item, keep in mind how much product you're getting in here and how long it will really last you. It is scented, so if you're sensitive to scents, keep that in mind, but I don't find it's a scent that really lingers on the skin. You'll smell it on application if it goes up your nose, um, but otherwise the smell definitely dissipates and it does a great job keeping me matte. Lastly, one from the drugstore, I wanted to mention this from Rimmel. It is their Clear Complexion Powder, and this is their clarifying powder. This was originally out in the UK. I got this in a swap like a while ago, in a, in a swap with someone from the UK. It's now out in Canada. Not totally sure if it's out in the States. I know that Rimmel seems to be get the, get the latest to the States, but Rimmel has a million different types of powders. They've got a bunch of mattifying powders. I think this one is my favorite. I haven't dabbled much in the Stay Matte, and then they have an Insta Matte one, which I like that one too, but something about the tone of this I really, really enjoy. I had this in my purse. What else did I have to grab for my purse? I grabbed the CoverGirl, the MAC, and then this from my purse, if that's uh, an attestament to you at all. I think it only, I, can't, I think it only comes in one shade. This is transparent, but it's not like a white transparent. And this is another powder that I like to use after a setting spray. I demonstrated that in a video last year sometime. And I really like this. I like it for touch up. I like it for after a setting spray. I haven't really used it much for actually setting my face. All of these powders, like just because I don't use it to set my face doesn't mean you can't. It's obviously gonna be something you have to experiment with and I'm you know, a little bit stuck in my ways sometimes, especially when it comes to keeping all of this matte and not you know flat or cakey. So I find all of these powders do a really good job and this is really, really creamy and smooth for a pressed powder, such a great option. I don't love this format of packaging. It can get a little bit like it, the lid came off in my purse today and I was like, ugh. But otherwise, the actual powder itself, I think, is fabulous and incredibly affordable. I think this is like seven bucks. So there you have it. I hope you found those suggestions helpful. I know that I probably left out some that I've recommended in the past, and it doesn't mean that I don't love those. It's just these are like my top, 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 and I'm kind of in the process of constantly testing new powders, but it does take me a little bit of time to figure out if I really like a powder because there's just so many ways to use it. It depends on your foundation, setting spray, primer, so I really, really, these are my true and tried tested powders. The peach one is the newest to my collection, but like I said, I have been really, really impressed with it. So let me know down below what powders are your favorite for mattifying. And if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat at SamanthaJaneYT, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.